Hey, buddy, how you doing? Great, Crab Man. Appreciate the time. Won't keep you for too long, but I uh, want to get into the reunion and a couple things. All right. Awesome. Cool. And uh, obviously, you being back in the band, the voice, in my opinion, back in the band, but kind of curious how this uh, reunion all started. I mean, you left the band a few years ago and kept in touch with the guys, but when did it turn from hanging out to, I miss you, I want to be back in the band, or how did it go down? No, it was, it was, uh, you know, like, like you said, we've, we've all kept in touch with each other. Uh, we're friends and we've kept in touch the whole time. And, uh, they just called and said, Hey dude, Glenn's going to go do some deep purple shows. And he's doing, um, you know, a new black country communion record. Would you be interested in coming back again? And, uh, you know, I never had an issue with the band. I mean, like I said, we're all friends. I thought I I I totally stand by the music that we did together, uh, the shows. So when they asked, I said, yeah, sure. You know, I got together with David Lowy. One of my concerns was the, 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 the you know, like, I, I and I think I've said this before, uh, we were doing so much so fast before that I was concerned about the the whole burnout thing again. And uh, David assured me uh, when we got together, he said, nah, dude, he goes, I, this is about having fun. He goes, I want to work. I want us to work our asses off, but not to the point where we're burnt out or we're uh, like, just, I just think everybody was tired in 2018. And I just personally, I just needed a little tap out, <laughs> catch my breath. And then obviously COVID after three years of COVID, like right. I was more than excited to get back to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I was going to mention. Like really COVID made everyone tap out for a few and sit on the sidelines. So I'm sure that kind of recharged the batteries a little bit quicker than normal. Yeah. You know, and it, it was, uh, it was, uh, it, look at the end of the day, I, I, I got the phone call from David to come back and I went up and I rehearsed with them and it sounded, it amazing um by the end of the week it sounded awesome it it was like immediately we got into the thing of you know joking with each other insulting each other <laughs> it's like it's like i never left you know what i mean so um i've got another round of rehearsals coming up here in a few days uh i'm on tour right now with tom Kiefer and winger mm -hmm. and uh at chicago shows i'm gonna fly to new york do another week of rehearsals. Then I fly to Nashville and I pick up with Tom and Winger again. And uh, we go to August 18th. August 19th is laundry day. And August 20th, I fly back to meet the Daisies and we start the tour. Yeah, wait, man. Definitely looking forward to it. And your old friend Brian Tishy uh, back on, on drums with the band. And then I guess the only new guy for you is Michael Devin. But not new. I've known Michael since... God, 1999 or 2000. Um, so, Michael, like I said, we're it. It's it, that's the coolest thing about this. Somebody asked me today. They're like, you know, what what's the appeal? Or, you know, I know there's, you know, everybody in the band is a competent player, but what's the appeal about wanting to go back? And I said, we're friends. <laughs> First it, and foremost. It's, yeah, it's like, I mean, yeah, Doug Doug Aldridge. Could, plays the hell out of the guitar michael devin's a great bass player uh brian tishy to me is like one of the best drummers out there beast and and yeah and and it's like we get to hang out together with david and and uh we're just all great friends and we love not even when we're playing we love hanging out and goofing off and joking and insulting each other and <laughs> it's it, it's it's it, 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 perfect situation i love it man well i'm glad to see you back in the band we got the best of album kind of as a refresher coming out there with some unreleased tracks and then the tour two southern california shows kind of in our neck of the woods ramona main stage on september 8th and then the very uh two nights later at the roxy with the black moods opening a really cool rock band out of arizona bill that's a great package the two of you just straight up rock and roll yeah I've never, I, I, I've heard of the Black Moods. I haven't seen them. I think they did some shows with the Daisies last year. Hmm. Um, so I'm looking forward to meeting the guys and, and saying hello. And 
you know what, dude, I'm just honestly, like I was saying earlier, after three years of, after three years of COVID, I'm just happy to be back to work. <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Speaking All of, good. Speaking of work right now, like you had mentioned out on the road with Kiefer, how's that been going, man? Are you doing just solo acoustic right now? I, I'm, I'm playing acoustically, but it's a uh, winger full band. Mm -hmm. um, so I go first. I play about 35 minutes. Winger plays about an hour. And then Tom comes on for like an hour and a half. And <laughs> attendance has been great. Uh, everybody's happy. You know, again, I've known Tom for, God, 40 years back yeah. from Philadelphia. Um, we're all friends with the kid, Winger guy. You know, so it's just, again, it's just like this little uh, boys club on the road. <laughs> And uh, we're just having a blast, man. It's great. And it's great to see the fans coming out and, and enjoying live music again. Yeah, I'm bummed that package isn't hitting Southern California because it's a great one. I haven't seen Winger and Forever, who's probably the only band from the 80s left with the original four members in the band. And, of course, Kiefer, yes. Golden Set of Pipes, and, and so many Cinderella hits. Yes. It's been uh, it's been awesome. I'm, I'm really... Uh, really pleased and uh, you know honestly everybody's having a great time and we're kidding with each other the crew guys all get along with each other so like i said it's like a it's like a little boys club you know <laughs> so it, it's been awesome so what's next then are you gonna stick into the dead daisies is there another solo album coming or are you gonna work on new music with the dead Daisies? I, i'm still working on some stuff like I, I you know obviously the daisies got the new record out it's called the best of right um I think it's available now for pre-order, but it comes out out August 18th. Um, and right now we're focused on getting a kick-ass set together for the for the tour. Um, myself, I've got some music put away. I I released a couple of songs. Uh, I've got one that's getting ready to come out on this uh, Paramount Plus documentary that's coming out on june or july 18th ah uh it's called i want to rock chasing the dreams oh yes um, i did read about that yeah and so i got a new song it's in one of the episodes so i'm gonna try and drop that around the time the around the same time as the docuseries um dude it's just life is good it's it's, it's 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 awesome you know, busy, busy, busy. I'd love to hear it, man. And it won't keep it for too much longer. A couple last questions I wanted to hit you with. I wanted to talk a little crew just because uh, it's basically 30 years since that self-titled album. I mean, 30 years ago, you were probably in the midst of recording it. And man, I was trying to think of for you coming in your first album with the new band and such a personal uh, song like Uncle Jack. Kind of curious, were, were you already kind of working on that one? And, and A, B, did, was there any, uh, I guess, uh, res reservations about releasing that? Like uh, letting people know about your family or maybe Motley Crue was the perfect place to, to let that out? It, it Everything happened the way it was supposed to happen. We had the music and oddly enough, uh, we had kind of worked up just parts of this song and it was a song that was detuned um and we were calling it evil d <laughs> it sounded like like you know uh like godzilla walking through town <laughs> and uh, i got a call from my mother about her brother and she told me this whole thing about you know it's common knowledge now he had molested my brothers and sisters and quite a few other people. And then uh, when I was in Motley, he got popped again for molesting these two young boys that he was renting a room from their parents. Oof. And so I don't, I don't know what happened, but I, I went downstairs the next day. I was, I was just pissed about the whole thing. And I went down the next day and I told all the guys the story. I said, you know, that song that we have evil D I said, I, I think I want to write the lyrics about this. And I told them the whole story 
And Nikki just looked at me and he was like, yes, yes. If you're cool with it, I'm cool with it. So we did the song. We recorded it. And then just to make sure, I called all my brothers and sisters and said, are you guys cool with me releasing this song? And they all, at diff- you know, I talked to them at different times, but all, all of them said the same thing. Yes, if it'll bring attention to somebody else having an issue, then we're all for it. And then what we did is we released it as a single and donated like all the royalties for that song to, um, you know, any organizations that help like, you know, uh, you know, kids that are being uh, mistreated or, uh, you know, molested, things like that, whatever. But uh, when I told them, when I told those guys the story, they were like, yes, that's wow. perfect. Let's do it. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Cause I kind of wondered if, if you had not been sitting on that, but it sounds like it kind of just happened in real time. It, it really happened in real time. We were working on the song. My mom called and uh, like I said, we kind of started working on it and recorded like, you know, rough parts of it. And we were just calling the idea like evil D <laughs> and I told him the story. We initially were going to call it, uh because my uncle's name was uh jack hayes and we were going to call the song the ballad of jack hayes and the only reason why we changed it to uncle jack was because the record label was afraid of a lawsuit uh so we just said all right whatever you know (laughs) but it it worked out great and you know it's funny dude like even yesterday i was doing an acoustic set and this guy came up to me, he was probably, I don't know, 35, 36 years old. And he said, and I kind of knew what he meant, but he just said, dude, you have no idea what that song means to me. Like, I, I, I you know, and he, he didn't really expand on it, but he, I, I knew what he meant. You know what I mean? So. It's uh, it, it's a cool tune. Validation for putting it out there, for taking the chance. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I love it, man. I also wanted to touch upon uh, Hooligan's Holiday as well, but probably my favorite tune off of that album. That one was... That one took a little time to work on, but, you know, it's funny, the title... If you remember the uh, the riots after the Rodney King thing. Yeah, 92. Yeah. Um, one of the newscasters, they were flying a helicopter over parts of L.A. And, like, all these stores were burning and, like, Hollywood and down in, like, you know, uh, East L.A. And, like, all these different places. And um, the newscaster, I guess it was KTLA. Mm -hmm. channel five yeah he goes man it's a regular hooligans holiday out there Ah. and i was like oh that's kind of cool so i wrote it down and then when once we started working on the song i told nikki the title and he was like dude that's great you know and so we kind of made it you know we used the title from the riots um there's a couple little things in there like they call unruly fans at soccer games in england hooligans um and then but we kind of used it uh as like autobiographical about motley crew you know what i mean so you know when you're talking about the riding the motorcycles and you know black black mains flowing and all it's just you know just calling my we're just saying hey we're here a bunch of hooligans we're here and we're on. <laughs> let's do this so <laughs> love it man love love the insight on those tunes and funny to learn that it was a title based on the riots when it had nothing to do with that <laughs> lyrically but uh interesting where inspiration comes from yeah it, it it's funny man like it, it, it it's so random like i get people ask me all the time like what do i write my songs about and i'm like dude just look around you know there's 
like it, the news is 24 seven being inundated with crazy stuff all the time. Uh, you know, and you know, <laughs> there's no shortage of inspiration anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. John, appreciate all the time. Last thing I got to hit you with, man, we're an old school radio station that does mandatory Metallica every night at 10 p.m., which you're going to be a part of. And I've been recently in this little Metallica debate with a buddy of mine named Brad, who sings in a band called Against the Sun. We've been debating our favorite Metallica albums. His pick is Ride the Lightning. My pick is Master of Puppets. Out of those two, which would be your numero uno? Well, that's that's good. I'm I'm gonna go with Master though, Master of Puppets, only because, only because that's when re- that's when with MTV and everything, like people really started to go, wow, like what's going on with these guys? You know what I mean? Uh, what was this? Uh, I'm having a brain fart right now. Was it uh, one? That was on uh, the next album. Master of Puppets was the title track. Welcome Home Sanitarium, Battery. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm having a brain fart. But <laughs> yeah, Master of Puppets was the one that I think really with MTV really started putting Metallica on the map map. And and uh, you know, so I'm I'm gonna go with Master of Puppets as well. Love that song. So epic and the, the dual solo in the middle of it. Uh do you have a favorite song we could play for you on Mandatory Metallica? Hey, let's do Sanitarium. Oh, welcome home. The the ballad, their first sort of ballad, even though it's yeah. about a mental institution. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, but it was that that was. I remember seeing that video, and I'm like, wow, this is really cool. It's like really kind of dark, and you know, it, it, lyrically, I thought it was great. So let's play Sanitarium. Beautiful, John. Thank you so much for the time. Hope to catch you at the uh, L.A. show for the uh, Daisies. Yeah, let's have a beer, bro. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. All Safe right. travels out there. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye.